Hi, welcome to Avocet Math. In this video, we'll talk about practice exams and the sorts of benefits to get from that. Now, you'll want to take a few practice exams prior to the actual AMC in February, but uh, don't try to cram the practice exams into that very last week before the AMC. That's a bad idea and probably not worth the effort. Instead, try to spread them out over several weeks to get the most benefit. Now, one of the big things to look for in these practice exams is what I call recurring patterns. Now, in taking just a few of these exams, you'll realize that uh, the concept of similarity for uh, triangles and other geometric figures comes up uh, maybe two, three, sometimes even four questions per uh, AMC exam. Another concept that's uh, very recurring are the uh, Vieta relations for quadratics and, and higher order polynomials. And you'll also notice that the calendar year shows up in uh, most every AMC exam. So if, for example, you take the AMC exam in the calendar year 2016, uh, it's very helpful to know in advance that uh, 2016 can be written with the following prime factorization. And if you take the AMC in the calendar year of 2017, you want to know in advance that uh, 2017 is in fact a prime number. So you'll find that with just a few practice exams, you'll notice that some patterns are just so regular that uh, you'll want to brush up in these areas if you find gaps in your skills. Now, the other major benefit to get from practice exams is to, to get familiar with the rate at which the exam questions become more difficult as you get further into the test. And you want to get an idea of the likely range of questions you can expect to get right. So essentially, you're trying to use these practice exams to get a feel for the range of uh, correct questions and uh, the time budget that you'll have to do that. So if, for example, during your practice exams, you find that uh, your typical range of correct questions is perhaps 10, well, that's a good goal because that would give you a score of approximately 82, and that would put you in the top 25% for the AMC exam test takers. And if, it, for example, you're, you find that your expected range is approximately 14 questions correct, then uh, that too is a good goal. That would get you to a score of approximately 100, and that would usually put you in the uh, top 5% of the AMC test takers, and that would usually land you in the uh, honor roll for that particular test year. So I just want to mentioned that uh, these percentages are for the AMC test takers and typically less than 2% of all US high school students take the AMC exam. So uh, to, to score in the top quarter or the top 5% of this elite group would definitely put you up into the 99 point whatever percentile for all high school students and it's, it's definitely a, an accomplishment uh, worth celebrating. Now, just as an example, uh, for the case of uh, 10 correct questions is your expected range, uh, let's see how that works out to in terms of how you would budget the time for the test. So I like to look at the test as 25 questions broken up into blocks of five. It's kind of helpful to, to view the test in that way. And in our example where we have an expected range of 10 correct questions, what that means is that you really only need to concern yourself with the first 15 questions of this 25 question test. And you can pretty much ignore the last 10 questions because they're usually so difficult that they're beyond what you can expect to get correct. So given that, we find that these 15 questions uh, divided into the 75 minutes for the exam gives you an average time of approximately five minutes per question but of course, the earlier questions are much easier than the later questions. So that typically breaks out into maybe four minutes per question for the first half and, and perhaps maybe six minutes per question for the second half. So that's not too bad. That's a reasonable amount of time to handle these uh, difficult questions. And as an example, again, for the case of 14, uh, if you were expecting to get approximately 14 questions correct on the AMC, that means you would need to concern yourself with the first 20 
questions of the exam, and you could pretty much ignore the last five questions of the exam. And in that case, you'd have 75 minutes to look at uh, 20 questions, and that would give you approximately four minutes per question. But again, since the earlier questions are simpler, that would probably break out into maybe three minutes for the earlier questions and five minutes for the latter questions. A little more difficult, but still quite manageable. So with that uh, advice, I'd like you to check out the description section of this video for uh, convenient links to recent AMC 10 and AMC 12 exams and solutions. Give some a try, and I hope this video helps you get the most out of them. So take care, and we'll see you at the next video. Bye-bye.